This episode of the Only Kings podcast is brought to you by OrganicPricedBooks.com. Guys, there's not been a better time to get into collecting comics, and OrganicPricedBooks.com has multiple formats such as the Omnibus, Deluxe Hardcover, and Trade Paperbacks at huge discounts, such as The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 5, originally at $125, marked down to $80. Use my discount code NOAH, N-O-A-H, at checkout for an additional discount on top of what you're already getting, which can range from anywhere between 25 to 42% off. Again, organicpricebooks.com, discount code NOAH, N-O-A-H, for an additional discount. Now back to the show. You know, we'll, we'll just start right here. Yeah, so I got that on Amazon. Uh, they are having a flash sale, and um, it was the Elon... And the Joe Rogan for like 30 bucks, I think. And I, me and my girlfriend, we lit them one night. And they actually smell really good. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? They smell surprisingly good. I thought it was Professor X. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you for coming back. My dog. Good Hell to have yeah. you. Thank you for coming for the first thank time. You. Good you. to meet you. Yeah. It's awesome yeah. to have the local talent in. For sure. Thank Always you. a pleasure. Appreciate that. Um, so you are one of three. Mm-hmm. In your rap group, Tio, right? So it's you, and then who are the two other gentlemen? Uh, Tio, Eternity, and uh, A Omega. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh, and you've been rapping for years. Yeah. Like, uh, so you, you were kind of breaking it down for me before we started, but kind of yeah. go through that whole thing. That's a crazy story. Okay, so I'll start from the beginning. Uh, me and my cousin, Tio E, uh, we first started rapping at our grandmother's house. We used to give each other the you know the little tape recorder like that you could interview like interviews on or whatever yeah like when people were like talking in courtrooms and stuff like that we would go to the other room and he would go to the restroom and i'd go to like the wherever in the kitchen and we would spit like whatever we came up with blah, 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 and show it to each other and be like all right that shit's dope you know what i mean and then uh, after that like i started messing with ej and i'd put like little beats together with like halloween sound effects and I only did one song like that. It was it was semi horrible, but it was all right. You know what I mean? But um and then it moved on to he had a crew, my cousin Matt, uh, and A Omega at the time was called Sincere or Devonier, actually. And uh my cousin Matt, his name was Slappy, and uh they used to be in a group called uh Four MK, Four Mental Chaos, and it was out of Santa Fe and it was with another friend of theirs named Job. And um after a couple of the songs that they would make, they brought me down a couple of summers and I would just like mess around with them, smoke bud and record random songs. You know what I mean? Whatever they wanted me to jump on, I'd jump on and it just sparked my interest to like just start recording. And uh, after that, I linked up with um, DJ Uncut. We started The Ugly Kids. It was a crew like in 2007. Um, and then it turned into Vile Style Fridays where I was doing a song a week with DJ Uncut for like 150 weeks, you know what I mean? Straight every Friday. And it just taught me not to have writer's block, you know what I mean? Like anything that like came across my way, like feature wise, whatever concept wise, I was ready to tackle it, I guess, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, that's, that's basically in a nutshell, that's my rap history, I guess, like in a you know what I mean? No, that's crazy, man. That's <laughs> that's a crazy history, and that's all here in Albuquerque. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, some of it was in Santa Fe, like the Four Mental Chaos stuff that was in Santa Fe. But, uh, excuse me. Uh, but yeah, everything that I did solo or now with T.O. Or, um, we used to have a group called the Sanified Poets. That's what we were called, me, T.O.E., and A. Omega, and everyone thought we were like a Catholic Christian rap group or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And we're like, oh, we're not that. We're just like talking about like real life shit. Like, you know what I mean? And uh, so we definitely had to rebrand. And that's when uh, TIO came about. And uh, the rest is history. Um, we actually uh, flew out to Los Angeles to open up for uh, B Real's birthday party from Cypress Hill. No shit. It was actually like a Summerfest type of deal. So, like, Sugar Free was there, Too Short was there, Snoop was DJing the whole thing. That's uh, dope. Delinquent Habits was there. Uh, I had like all my photos from me being on stage from that show were taken by Photonoid. He's uh, the photographer for Delinquent Habits. And so it was just a real cool experience. We paid a thousand bucks to do that. You know what I mean? And so that's I'm, awesome. I'm really into like putting money into getting us where we need to be and 
the exposure that the group needed and you know what i'm saying so we threw out a bunch of merch and a lot of people grasp to it you know what i mean yeah we have nine albums out right now with uh with arrows independent studios that we recorded in a mixtape as well we're working on album 10 and 11 uh 11 is euthanasia 2 it's gonna be a compilation i got notorious t on it i got uh. i got uh king Ra Ra the ruler on it um a bunch of people you know what i mean i'm trying to really bring out like everybody that i've grown up and seen uh flourish in the scene and just put us all together on a track and or on an album and just throw it out there you know what i mean no for sure that's crazy and i mean you, you bring up a good point if unless you're extremely you know blessed and you're we've come into a situation where you have a lot of money right. you kind of have to sacrifice a lot yes. and go into i mean i don't from experience go into debt mm -hmm. to make something happen yes. and you you know just kind of like you have to put a lot of monetary risk into a project if you really believe in it mm -hmm. or you can't half-ass it mm -hmm. i mean you can but you put in what you're gonna get out what you get in and it'll show you know what i mean like yeah if you put in like 50 bucks for a music video nowadays you're gonna get somebody that just shows up with a 50 dollar worth of video camera you know what i mean and it's like Straight honestly up. but like and uh honestly I, i've been shooting a couple music videos lately uh i've been i've been doing them all in uh 4k with my sony alpha a7 III. nice thing is tight the lens alone is just miraculous you know what yeah. i'm saying so like i just really want to make sure that anytime we do a visual for a new Mexican artist or an artist in general, if I was to go anywhere else or whatever, that it would be just as professional as LA, New York, Atlanta. You know what I mean? No, yeah, no, for sure. Like, I, I mean, I love telling the story because, like, it's just looking back on it, it's ridiculous. But just like with the stuff we have now to work with, right? Um, when we first started doing this back in, oh yeah, so. Oh, let's put our phones away from the because we've been running into a problem where like if your phones are too close to the wires that static will kick that, up I was hearing that. yeah uh, i've totally for space i'm telling you guys that sorry um that. but we, when we started this me and my buddy joey uh back in october of last year we filmed it up in my kitchen right right and then like you said like 50 dollar cameras but we had 25 dollar cameras right and they weren't even brands it the the, the little white box just said video camera <laughs> it was off of Damn. ebay yeah it was broke as fuck <laughs> and that's so awesome, that's that's history though you know oh yeah <laughs> so we we filmed it and we had this mic and another one just like it and um i get the video footage over to my well, my producer and he lives in LA, so the way we transfer data is just through um, uh, Google Drive. Oh yeah, and that should have been like the first sign is if I can get a full episode over Google Drive to you in one night, probably not the best, you know, not the quality. best uh, quality of yeah. camera. Yeah. And and he's watching it and he he hits me up like a week later and he goes, "Dude, <laughs> I can't I can't use this footage." I'm like, "Why not?" And he goes, "Dude, it came out orange. Have oh, you watched shit. it?" And I'm like, "No." He goes, "Yeah." video came out orange that sucks yes Damn. yeah so our first episode had to be like audio only thank god we're able to do this now but um no i totally get you you, you definitely are going to get out what you put into it yeah. um speaking of the quality of the video like the last one you put out for uh bulletproof oh yeah that shit was fucking good oh uh, actually that was uh idea did that one um that was shout out to idea for sure but yeah that was yeah that was the group's video for sure yeah. we, we paid for that and we did put money a good yeah. amount of money into that one for sure no, that was a well-made video like thank with you, the little um uh, with little skeletons oh, yeah. uh, animated in their yeah. talking that shit was fucking thank good you. thank you and um, um shout out to mask c moss they uh, actually just let us go in there they're really good friends of ours we buy our uh uh, Mexican wrestling masks for when we perform live. No uh, shit. Yeah, we wear Lucha Lord masks. Right, yes, yeah, on the video. Yeah, right, so, right. So uh, we always go in and buy our masks before a show, and they like, yeah, you can shoot a music video here. I was like, uh, can we go on the roof? <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah. It was the hottest day of the summer that year, too, dude. Fuck it was that. Just like, Oof. It was insane. Yeah. But we did it. It was fun. And it's funny that you're wearing a dealer's hat because we were just talking about that podcast before we started. I saw both of you guys on there. Hell yeah. Fantastic episodes. Shout so what was, what was that uh, experience like for you guys? Shout out my boy Boozle, man. That's the man right there. Oh, yeah. That's the Albuquerque Diddy right there. Straight up. Yeah, everyone calls him like the mayor of Albuquerque when it comes to like the hip-hop rap scene, right? Mm -hmm. So he like, I remember there was a time... And I don't mean to cut you off at all, but there was a time where me and Fat Lee almost had like a beef and he stepped in and was like, hey, dog, like you guys don't really need to be beefing about this. I was like, I'm not. I was like, he got mad at me because I put one of our stickers over his sticker. You know what I mean? Like, it was it was really pun puni like punitive type stuff. You know right. what I mean? Like, so I was like, we're just like, nah, we're not going to go that route. You know? Right. It could have been, it could have been stupid and dumb. And, and so the guy, the guy who hosts dealers, what was his name again? 
Bamboozle. Okay. George, yeah, George Fisher. George Fisher. Okay, so what's his history? Because again, like uh, really up until our conversation that we had, that almost went like two hours. Uh, I had no, I knew next to nothing about Albuquerque's like specific Albuquerque's music, oh, you really? know, scene. I just don't really know where to start, yeah. how to look into that. So like, what's what's his history with Albuquerque's music? Well, yeah, him and Bundles the Billionaire started Fat Fish Records. And okay. Fat Fish was one of the biggest rap labels to ever come out of New Mexico. Ever. Okay. Like, straight New Mexico. Ever. And they've done a lot of big things. I think Boy Dirt... Boy Dirt was signed to him for a long time. Yeah. And Boy Dirt has probably racked up some of the most views in the state. Oh, no and shit. And so, yeah. The New Mexico Freestyle, I don't know if you ever heard that one. But that was a Fat Fish... Uh, they were running with Fat Fish during that. I'm going to move this a little closer uh, to you. Oh, Hope no, you out a little good. bit. Yeah, my bad. No, you're good. I'm just going to like... Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry, man. Yeah. There oh. you go. No, I'm just playing. There you go. All right. But yeah, no, he's the man, bro. Like, honestly, like, uh, I got backstage at a Bone Thug show probably about two or three years ago. You just see Bamboozle. That's that's where you see Bamboozle's at. He's at the fucking backstage, biggest stage. Yeah. yeah, he does the big things around here, bro. He's that's got awesome. that mindset. So Albuquerque Nights, he dro- uh, they dropped one of the one like a single at the time when they dropped Albuquerque Nights. It got on, the, it got played on the radio. It was probably one of the first singles to hit. Uh, from here, you know what I mean? Wow, mm-hmm. okay. And then it went Albuquerque Sunshine and so forth and so on until, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I love learning about all this. Like, this Hell is like, yeah. like, there's just so much about, I mean, I've been here for the past 24 years, you know, I'm born and raised here, but oh, okay. there's so much about it yeah. that I've never, never even would have even known of had, <laughs> yeah. should these conversations not happen. So I love learning about all this stuff. Right. Like so, is he like the guy to go to when you want to get uh, your music produced, put out there, marketed, or? A little bit. He's basically just kind of a. Uh, he he's been doing this for a long time. He's yeah. the man. Like, uh, he's got a studio dealer studio. But um, as far as like going to get your music produced and stuff like that, I say the man around town is Arrow. Yep. Yeah. That's, and you that's brought him up before we started as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. Arrow's is the man for sure. Uh, yeah. Arrow, uh, when it comes to mixing, mastering, recording, mm-hmm. uh, video editing, yeah, Arrows is a man of many hats. and mm-hmm. That's awesome. Knocks it out the park for sure. Straight up. So are both you guys operating out of Studio B now? Or Both of us? Yeah. Is it T and I? Or uh, Arrows and I? Well, like, so, would, so whenever you start making new music, are you going to go to Studio B to recover or uh, to record it? or? Well, yeah. Well, I'm going to get some music videos done for sure. Yeah. I've been talking about yeah. like, getting yeah. some music videos done. That's awesome. But like Arrows does the mixing, the mastering, all that. That's awesome. The recording and all that. Okay. Yeah. So Studio B is like a, a brother studio to Arrows Independent Studios. Me and Arrows opened it up. Um and uh, we're doing uh, custom clothing embroidery as of next week. You know, right. Uh, we're going to be doing, uh, well, we, we are doing 4K videos. We're doing commercials. Mm-hmm. We're doing promos for people. We're That's doing, crazy. Uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff. Uh, actually, the last video we did for uh, Mario Loyal out of Las Lunas, it won uh, the contest that they oh, had yeah. at uh, the Gem Spot. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's like if your video and your performance were on point, you win, and then they're going to fly him out to Denver. And if he wins in Denver, then the video gets put on to World Star so it's 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 yeah. crazy <laughs> damn yeah, yeah. Like, and when it, it's, it's it's awesome to see all of us intertwining too because yeah uh, Not- notorious t is also uh he also did a live performance over at studio b and it was mm-hmm. for a show that uh, a vision and lux are putting together and those are other uh two rappers that are from the albuquerque rap scene as well and they're doing a show called the showcase that'll be coming up pretty soon for that's sure. dope yeah that's seriously badass, yeah. man. Yeah, Studio B's the spot, dog. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The it's lighting, not... everything about it. And I like John Lennon. There's the, this dope ass painting of John Lennon's fucking glasses, like yeah. right on the side. <laughs> the feng shui is dope, dog. <laughs> feng shui yeah, is dope. Yeah, come down and check it out. Yeah, I'd sure. love to. That's awesome. And I and I love that like it's very versatile. Like you can record there, you can shoot there, but then you're also gonna do live shows out of there. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. that's genius. Yeah, I booked a live performance today with uh, Rib Dog, and he's gonna come in and bring like ten of his closest people. That's dope. Rock it out, and I would shoot in 4K, give him the footage. You know what I mean? And that's like, good shit. Really sick. So how does all this play into Southwest 16? Uh, Southwest 16. So for those listening, uh, you know, because not. As we found out recently, right. you know, not everyone that listens to this is from New Mexico, right, which is right, awesome. Right, yeah. So, so, the South right. so what is South Six, Southwest 16? Uh, the Southwest 16 is a, a rap competition that me and A Omega came up with the concept for. Uh, it's where rappers get to spit their hottest 16-bar verse 
like battle mode, you know what I mean? But not against each other. It's just like who has the better verse. You know what I mean? Like if two right. if two boxers are going in, we know that not they don't always knock each other out, but then they always go back to who threw the most punches and who landed the most punches, yada yada. You know what I mean? I don't watch boxing that much, but I guess that's how it goes, right? You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, these the, the rappers aren't attacking each other. Yeah, yeah. So it's like if they're they, just if they're they had just a rapping. Hot, a hot uh, simile, metaphor, uh, whatever that came up out of that verse that was a little bit more shinier and brightier than the other. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that's what we're looking for because I want to see New Mexico really shine, and I know we can. Uh, the concept kind of came from watching like 106 and Park when they do the Freestyle Fridays mm-hmm. and they would just have people freestyle to a beat and whoever won that freestyle, shout out Blind Fury, one of the sickest rappers, he's blind and he won like most of them, you know what I mean? Like Dang. if you go look it up on YouTube, he's like one of the sickest freestylers I've ever seen next to like Big L or something like that, you know what I'm saying? That's but badass. like, yeah, I drew a lot of inspiration from that and like rhythm and flow and I wanted to see really who had the best 16 bar verses when they were really put up to the challenge to be like, I got this hot 16. That's you know what shit. I'm saying? So, yeah, so we've got 16 rappers spitting 16 bars, and that's the, and we're in the Southwest. So it was, just, it was right to call it the Southwest 16. No, yeah, that's, that's super badass. Yeah. Um, so you brought up a little earlier that you've got nine albums out already. Yes. And what I loved about our first conversation was we really went into, like, the history of your music, like, what really inspired it and why. Um, because I, I feel like kind of like I explained to you the last time, like there's a difference between people who are just phoning it in, mm-hmm. right? They're kind of catch the hot, you know, 15 minutes of fame. Right. They know it's famous. They're trying to copy the Post Malone's, Ariana Grande's, mm-hmm. you know, now it's mm-hmm. Megan Thee Stallion right. and uh, Lil, Na- like Lil Nas X, yeah. baby, all of them yeah. trying to copy that rather than do and believe in what they're making right. and try to refine that. Right. And I saw a lot of that in your guys' music Thank through you. Teal. Like it's very apparent. Thank you. Um, so where like, when, when it came to making your first couple of albums, where did it go from like, okay, we, we obviously have the ability to make music. Like, right. we can make the music. Right. But where did that go from we can do it to like we're going to and it's actually going to be worth listening to, worth marketing? So what really jump like jump started it is like I had a bunch of beats, right? And like we – so I was going through a, a foreclosure in my house, right? So I didn't have to pay the rent for like a whole year right the whole mortgage was me and my kids mom we split up everything was going array i guess you could say so i was like i used that to our advantage and i was like you know what uh a omega toe uh my brother cameron we all lived together for two years uh without without having to pay the mortgage so we we're able to put money into like beats and recording time and all kinds of shit so yeah. we just did that and of course taking care of my kids you know what i'm saying right yeah like that was the biggest thing that i do top of the list of everything before music before studio b you know what i mean it's always my kids first but um like i said it was just like not having to come up with an extra thousand dollars a month for two years was actually a big help in jump starting what tio did and um the first two albums, it was me and T.O.E. We were just uh, going at it. Just uh, It was like a duo at first, and then A. Omega came in for the third album and so forth. And um, after we all uh, collaborated and came back and uh, started coming up with more different concepts, and I was listening to what they were saying, and they were listening to what I was saying, and, and we were listening to what A. Omega was saying, and instead of just like oh, this is what it is, and this is the first thing that we came up with, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it was a real joint effort, and uh, and I really thank them highly for, like, the energy that came out of it. You know what I mean? We were able to open for a bunch of people and travel and get the word out there. You know what I mean? And it was really cool. Um, and... What was the other question? Well, no, it was just like... Sorry, I'm like... No, 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 you're good. (laughs) No, it's just... I just love finding out, like, where where that jumpstart moment is, right? From where it's like, okay, yeah, we have the ability to do this. I have the ability to do this. Now, how are we actually going to get it done? And, like, what's the reason for why? Um, But what's interesting is that you, at least with Tio, you started out immediately collaborating with somebody, right? It wasn't just you making the music. So, it's really a question for both of you guys. Uh... How do you guys choose, like, okay, I do want to collaborate with somebody, I don't, um, you know, what's that process? Because, I mean, you hear all the time, whether it's in music, movies, video games, writing, right? Mm-hmm. The collaborations can go south real quick. Oh, yeah. Real quick. So, how, how, what's that process for you guys? How do you kind of weed through that? Well, for me, I kind of, when, it, when it's into collaborating and stuff like that, features and stuff like that, 
I kind of go off of like my beat selection. If that person's voice and their rap style and their cadence match what I'm trying to do, and if their sound is similar to mine or their beat style is similar to mine, I'll rock with them. But um, I got too much pride, man. Like I'm not going to work with somebody that really needs to work on their craft. You know, like somebody that's just a year in and they're just, they think they're the hottest shit. I mean, I like to work with artists, artists, like artists that really put their mind into what they're doing. Not so mind grind time. Like, you know, I want, I like intricate lyricism and a vibe, you know? And so that's basically how I go about it is it's got to be deeper than the music. Yeah. If it's deeper than the music, then I rock with you. Well, I mean, there's a really important, uh, quote that I, I think about constantly especially now that i started this it's a friend of everyone's a friend of no one you know like if you're if you're just trying to just overreach and work with everybody and do everything mm -hmm. i mean you're cutting your, ironically you're cutting yourself short right right you know work on what you know right you know so so what's that process like for you how i'd imagine there's a, a lot of similarities so a lot of it was organic. Uh, like we would bump into people at Arrow Studios, and I'd be like, "Hey, I heard you spit that verse. I think here would sound sick on this." A lot of it, we, a lot of us are all friends. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So like, and we all know that we all have talent. So the ones that do, uh, usually make songs are the ones that do. And then, and I'm not saying nobody has less talent, but like they, like how you said, people that need to work on their craft just a little bit more. It's a little bit. Um, uh, it's harder to collaborate with that. Like I, I was talking to someone earlier, there was an experience I had at a studio where, like, where my voice sounds right now is like my EQ. You you got my EQ right. Like I'm not I'm not delayed a little bit. I can't like like it's, I'm not stumbling on my words because I'm hearing my words delayed. You know what I'm saying? And there's been a couple of times where I've been in studios where I couldn't get the verse out the way I wanted to because of the way that the EQ or the engineering was set up. So now, if anyone wants me to do a feature, I have them shoot me the beat and I just knock it out at arrows. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just easier for me that way. Uh, I do like vibing in the studio, but like after COVID, it's like who wants to kick it and who doesn't? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like no one knows. Uh, no. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. no is, one it knows. Cool, is it cool to ask you if I can come to your studio and blow weed all night? And like, <laughs> What real? Like on accident, like you know what I mean. Like, well, hey, as far as the engineering over here goes, I take no credit for that. That is a hundred and ten percent my producer because he makes music, right? Right, right, right. He codes and he makes music. Oh, so, and oh, so damn. yeah. So basically, I was like, Jay, you tell me what to do, and I will do it. Like right. I do not know any of this. I don't. I frankly, don't have time to learn. Like I learned so many other things about this. Right. Just tell me what to do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I send him the audio he's he mixes masters and i say thank you so much <laughs> that's, okay. yeah. that's how it has to be sometimes for sure yeah but um no covid like covid's a weird thing um like everything is it's weird like when that kicked off everything creative had to stop but then it's almost in that same year so many creative things got sprung out of it mm -hmm. so how yeah. did covid end up affecting your operation uh Quite a bit, actually, because no, like I said, no one wanted, no one was out and about. Uh, I know Arrows was closed for a while. You know what I mean. So no one was recording. Uh, no one wanted to go outside. Um, it was just weird. Uh, I just smoked like probably two pounds of weed, and <laughs> you know what I mean, like yeah. for real, like not even lying. I yes. Like, once I saw like the little memes on Facebook, like oh, weed uh, protects you from COVID or whatever. They're like the little memes where I was all, oh, sick. I'm good. <laughs> like, you know Great. what I mean. I was like. Immunity, like it's safe. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> Straight up. Yeah, my brother could attest that we smoked pounds of weed <laughs> for real. <laughs> yeah, so it was it, mm -hmm. it was fun in a way. Uh, we we got to write some stuff. Uh, A Omega did come down every single week and come kick it. Um, so did Toe. You know what I mean? And we just write stuff here and there, like just whenever we could. And yeah. it did it did slow it down because we went from in 2018 we put out five albums that year. And Jesus Christ! One year, so like. 2019, 2020, like, we put out, like, two, you know what I mean? Or whatever, like, That's one dope. per year. Like, you know what I mean? And yeah. it was just, like, it was weird. I was like, fuck. I was like, we could have done so much more if this didn't happen. And then what's weird, and I don't mean to sound all uh, Joe Rogan-ish, but, like, I, I think that COVID was just... It was the weirdest thing to ever happen to us. And, like, now that it's gone, like it's not as serious as people made it to be when it first popped up and it just really it really triggered me because 
what I was watching before COVID hit, and I don't know if this ties in anything, but I was watching a bunch of that fucking weird ass human trafficking, Jeffrey Epstein, weird shit. And so for everything to be like, you know what I mean? Like, like for it to turn so fast and for it, I, I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but it's like, I don't know. You never know who's trying to hide what or cover up what. And Facts. For them to do this. Well, because I've got like two theories on that, right? It's either you're dead on. Right. And that's exactly what it is. Or to something a whole lot worse that we don't know about. Exactly. And they're letting us think that. Yes. And, right. And the way how things are happening so fine and dandy, I guess you could say nowadays when everything opens up, it kind of scares me too because it's like, well, what the fuck asteroids coming? You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, or <laughs> yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? Like, that's what they're, are they not Straight telling up. us about that? And that's why everyone's going to Mars. I don't know. Well, I mean, everything's so, I mean, not that it's exactly surprising, but when COVID started kicking off, everything was politicized. Everything yeah. and um, and it was just inter- interesting to see the uh, the responses from the different countries around the world. Like we were kind of like, mm, let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. And the way we handled COVID, especially between like March and probably like June or July of last year, I mean, the way we handled it and the way we kind of went about it was saying like, well, it's mostly a problem over there, not really going to affect us. We don't need to worry about it. Like that's like, don't get me wrong, I love this country, but, like, that's such, like, a privilege of, of like, Western society. Mm-hmm. Like, we have, we've had that privilege, like, yeah, we've got our shit together, uh, everything's gonna be okay. Um, because I think before COVID, it was, you, you, our politicians could be shitheads, mm-hmm. right? They could be absolute morons, mm-hmm. and they could mess everything up, mm-hmm. but we'll still be okay. Like, we have a system in place, everything's gonna be fine. COVID happens, they screw it up, and everything was not okay, mm-hmm. right? Everything was absolutely not okay. And then you see countries like India, where like a month in, they were just like, you know what? No, we're closing everything. And they shut down completely, had very little cases, very low deaths, you know, they were fine. Then you also had countries like Sweden, at least with the first, uh, the first like wave, the first surge, whatever you want to call it, they didn't even close down. They're like, Let's just see how it hits us. I mean, we're not fat like the like the Americans. You know, we don't eat burgers all day, and we don't like, you know, just like you know, we're not Western society. Yeah. We're isolated. We have a quarter of the population. Let's just see what happens. Mm-hmm. And then they were fine, mm-hmm. you know. And now we're finding out. Did you hear about the Fauci emails? I was just about to bring that up. Mm-hmm. Did, okay, yeah. So you read them. Oh yeah. Okay, so go ahead. What you read? So uh, basically, in a nutshell. Uh, we kind of got duped by one of the biggest. Uh, we got duped. Yeah, I mean, Anthony we got Fauci. Hosed, Tommy. We got hosed. Yeah, like it. it we got duped. Yeah, it was. It we was did. a good. Well, he basically said in one email, and uh, I forgot who it was to, but Ashton he. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. Fuck. But um, he was saying that um. It was a December, right? I'm going to talk about how masks don't work. That that one. I think the email yes. came out in last December. Yeah. He forwarded it to... Um, oh, I can't say that because that was a different email. But there's an email that Fauci sent some guy. And it basically discloses that in December 2020, this last December, he his findings were that the, the virus was so small, it masks are like non-existent. The mask whole the whole mask thing was basically just like it's a bunch of it's, it's a bunch of bullshit. It's bullshit. Right. It's absolute bullshit. I still think people should wear a mask if they got stank breath, but <laughs> that's just fucking a whole different story. But or if they're you know, but I don't know. But yeah, it's the the emails kind of showed, and then the forwarding, like I was gonna say, he forwarded an email to a very highly respected person in the government, and he basically said too long to read take this in the forward he was like oh you know what fuck it i'm just gonna forward this to so and so and i wish i knew who he forwarded the email to but it, a lot of carelessness on the nih if you ask me and like it just kind of freaked me out reading those you know i only read like four or five pages and it just kind of tripped me out like i said we kind of got duped and science is um something that is gonna be debated on for a long time because of religion and yeah. a lot of weird people and um a lot of people don't like to accept science yeah. you feel me no yeah and, 100%. Um, i think that and, and people were saying that since the beginning i mean look at texas they started opening up things with without masks everything months ago and no surge in cases 
death rate looks pretty understandable, and it's just kind of crazy. Well, they did it the right way. They yeah. did it the way. Well, if if there was any sort of American way, is the way they did it. The government or the governor said, "This is not my problem. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leave it up to the uh, to the to the counties. If you guys want to wear masks, go right ahead. Mm-hmm. City governments, go ahead. If you don't, cool. Private businesses, private businesses. If you want masks, wear them. If you don't want masks." Don't require them. Straight if, up, it's up to you, and that's that's the supposed that is supposed to be the relationship between government and its people, right? The government is only there because we allow them to be. That's yeah. how it's supposed to be, right. Right? right? It's they govern from the consent of the willing, mm-hmm. right? It's not supposed to. Be, it's not supposed to be this power trip that we've gone on for the past year and a half mm-hmm. now. Um, so you were correct with the email. It was so the two main things that I pulled out of it was that he a buddy emailed him and was like, yeah. What he asked him something like super blunt, and he was like, "What? Like, be real with me about the mass." Is pretty much what he said. It's like, mm-hmm. do they actually work? And he told him, "No." Funny, bring up stank breath. He goes, "Except for like the gross particles of sneezing and coughing." Yeah, that's all that would protect you against. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, I remember seeing this video of um, some physician on YouTube, and he he takes a huge hit off a of vape, right? Puts a mask on, and just all the smoke comes out of the vape, and he goes. The COVID particles are millions of times smaller than this. Mm-hmm. Your masks are not helping you. Mm-hmm. Damn. They are not helping you. Doesn't it cause like a condensation within the mask where you can get sicker easily? Yes, right? because all that mm-hmm. bacteria right. uh, can get uh, clotted pretty much. Right. Mm-hmm. right? It's, it's like you're stuffing it. Like all those little, no, I'm, not a, I'm not a doctor, it but <laughs> but I'm just a guy in his garage. Um, but, <laughs> it's a nice, nice garage. <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> I love but, it. Really. Um, a swaggy garage. Right? <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. It's cool in here, and it's Straight fucking up. 150 degrees outside. That's, that's what counts. <laughs> yeah, right? Straight up. Um, but basically, like the way it got explained to me was in the mask, those very small holes that you do have so you can breathe out of there. Those, imagine that. It's like a bunch of very, very tiny uh, drains in your tub. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And whenever you're breathing, you're coughing, you're sneezing, all that bacteria is just punching up that drain. Mm-hmm. And eventually, it'll get clogged. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the first email. And the second email was, um, it, it was like a group email um, from a bunch of different scientists. And they're basically trying to figure out the, um, uh, the, the lab theory. And it was the... Um, it was the type of science that we were, we were funding in um, that we were actually funding in the Wuhan, Wuhan lab over in China. Typically, I've got a buddy over there since we looked stuff off the internet, but he got busy tonight. I forget what it's called, but um, maybe I'll think of it later. Anyway, it was a group email, and a lady asked Fauci, "Hey, what do you think about this? Like, what do you think about um, whether or not this was created in the lab?" And he said, "Well." We'll find out more on Monday. And this was sent in like January of this year. He sounded just like him. Yeah. Well, we'll find out more on Monday. You know? like, but yeah, like, like he goes, this is a, it's like a Friday afternoon. He goes, yeah, we'll find out more on Monday. But uh, what we see or what I've found in my, in my research is that it is more likely than not that it was created in a lab and it has the characteristics. Oh, it does not show character, characteristics of the evolutionary theory. And I read that, and I'm like... What does that even mean? Well, first of all, like, no shit. So basically what that means is... Um, the funny all thing, right, Joe Rogan... Joe Rogan, he had uh, <laughs> he had two guests on during the pandemic. Right. He had Michael Osterholm, who is a... Uh, I believe he's an evolutionary biologist and a virologist as well. And he also had uh, Brett uh, Weinstein, which is a mathematician. Oh, okay. Not No relation to Harvey. Thank God. Okay. Um, <laughs> and... And basically, what they were talking about was so Michael Osterholm was talking about how this isn't going to be a one and done. This is going to be a very big plague. It's going to take a while to get over. Like, we need to hunker down and the government needs to get their shit together because we're going to be here for a while, over a year. And what Brett Weinstein was talking about was that the way that this virus reacts, it is more likely than not that it was created in a lab and that it was. Because they do that all the time. They create labs um, every, around the or they create labs. They create viruses and labs all over the world to test on. That's mm-hmm. the whole point. So that when when stuff like so we can have in theory a better flu vaccine, right? A better way to cure strep, pneumonia, especially in children, right? Because that's 
I think it's one of the biggest, outside of like cancer, pneumonia is the biggest thing killing kids between the ages of zero and fucking, what, three, three and a half. So we're constantly around the world, scientists are creating coronaviruses to figure out how do we best uh, reverse engineer vaccines to beat these things. It's a very common thing. Mm. But because of the way that this virus reacts, meaning it spreads from person to person very easily. When exposed to UV rays, it dies almost instantly. Um, and it has a very high infection rate um, amongst, specifically amongst humans. That led them to believe, or him to believe, that yeah, this was created in a lab. Because if you, if you have like the UV thing, mm -hmm. if you have a virus that specifically lives in fluorescent light in controlled environments, it gets comfortable to that. It gets used to that, right? Think of vampire. It only stays inside. Right. But the moment it gets exposed to natural light from the sun, it dies. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it might as well, right? It dies. Yeah, really. So, um, in theory, like, yeah, I get the knee-jerk reaction is cover your face, stay inside. But in theory, if you could turn back the clock, you want people outside. Mm -hmm. Because that virus dies almost instantly. That's what I said from the beginning. And then they were like telling people like, if you take a hot ass shower with hot water in your nose, and it's going to kill it right away. And I was like, I was in the shower. And I was like, this is fucking dumb. I was like, uh. Well, what was the theory too? It was like, if you held your breath for 10 seconds, if you, and you didn't cough, you fucking, you got COVID. God. <laughs> but oh like, God. it's, it's weird now because um, now that we've got, uh, that Biden comes into office and he's able to he will finish off pretty much what Trump was starting with Operation. I've, God, the name is so stupid. Um, it's like Operation Warp Speed or mm. some shit. It's so stupid. Operation Dumbo Drop. <laughs> like, have you seen Spaceballs? Yeah. That's what that reminds me of with yeah. ludicrous speed mm -hmm. and shit. <laughs> ludicrous speed, yeah. yeah. And John Candy's oh, yeah. hair was orange in that movie. So was it really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Remember he was like the little cat character? Yeah, like, uh, he was uh, Barf. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. he was like little orange, like Trump hair for sure. He looked like a little troll for sure, for sure. That's, That's awesome. funny. But yeah, so they. They finish up pushing out the vaccines, and now that, like, again, logic states that when the majority is vaccinated, the majority of the people is vaccinated, you can go back to normal. Logic does state that. However, when you're dealing with a government that has a very, very stellar track rest record of lying, cheating, you know, we, we see what they've done to other civilizations. Using celebrities in the shot commercials this is our last shot no this is our last shot this is our last yeah shot. Like, like it is your last shot to fucking kill everybody and you're not gonna do it it's funny i was having a conversation with my buddy and we we're like dude that theory is so dumb about the microchips right? right that's so stupid there's no way and then i just looked it up for shits and giggles and they had just come up with a way to make a little chip that fits into a needle and i was like motherfucker mm -hmm. <laughs> And didn't they say yeah. they're putting, like, fridge magnets on their arms and shit like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it, it's, it's weird. It's not not weird. It's it's sad mm -hmm. how everything gets ultra-politicized. Like, tell, you're, tell like we're already so divided. Um, But you're going to go out of your way to give people shit. If they want to wear a mask, wear a fucking mask, bro. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like a hat. Wear a hat. Mm -hmm. Don't wear a hat. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. You know? And yeah. I... And I and I'd love to get you guys' opinions on this. I think we talked about this last time, too. But, like, yeah. one of the major things I think about 2020, like it would have been shitty either way, right? But mm -hmm. I was just wonder sometimes how different our pandemic would have, like, specifically to America, our coronavirus pandemic experience would have been if the George Floyd incident didn't happen. Yeah. I well, like, being like, cooped up and having to witness, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I think a lot of things... Just fuck, like it's fucked up, bro. And I don't know. I don't even know how to speak on that, honestly. Well, you know what's crazy too is, um, you know, I spend a lot of time with my grandparents, and I can see how politics affects them. And one thing about how you said the George Floyd thing is, it's kind of undisputed in a lot of ways because, um. I mean, and this is just my opinion, but I mean, what happened to that man was fucking horrible. Right. I mean, exactly. absolutely right. fucking horrible. And um, for, you know, and I'm a big spiritual guy. And I think for 328 million Americans to see that 
on their TV every single fucking day for like a whole year definitely has to do with something bigger. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, because I personally like, you know, I'm the type of person you just just to see kind of go into what I'm talking about. People wear crosses all the time of a bleeding man on a, I mean, children wear a, a bleeding man on a cross 24-7. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very desensitized world that we live in, in a, just Western society, like you said. And when it comes to the George Floyd thing, I just feel like um, the man should have gotten more than, um, I mean, th they have candlelight vigils and everything, but that was horrible. I mean, that was just fucking horrible. And... Um, I honestly think the people holding the cameras, like, there could have been one person holding the camera, and the That's, rest, rest of you guys could have been fucking up cops, eh? Like, yeah, no, why do, why mm, do you guys got to wait till someone passes exactly. away to make such a big deal about it, and then we're trapped inside, we're getting angry, we're seeing this happen, we, like you said, it's going on mm -hmm. weeks at a time, we're seeing mm -hmm. a clip of somebody getting killed on camera, mm -hmm. and like, uh, like, 70 people standing around him, and... Like, and I'm not trying to blame any of them, but, like, honestly, if I was there, like, and I really cared about people the way that everyone says they care about people, I would go, I would die to fucking save that man. You know, I would die. Yeah. I would go. I would kill. I would punch a cop in the head and get shot. And at least I punched a cop in the head to show that mm -hmm. like this shit ain't gonna stupid stand. You know, what straight I'm saying? up. Like honestly, like that's all I can say about that. And a good point about what he just said too is the January sixth insurrection. Look at what happened with everybody bum rushing the Capitol. They could have bum rushed those. How many? Three cops on his back, one on his neck. Yeah. One that one cop yeah. sitting just watching the whole thing. Why wait they could have the bum rushed those four people. Mm -hmm. Just completely bum rush, mm -hmm. and it's up to the cops to see if they want to use deadly force and shoot those fucking people. But that's exactly that's that what point, I was saying. At that point, is, there was hundreds of people in that street, right, watching what mm -hmm. was going on, right? It's and the ant know. mentality. It is the ant mentality. If uh, we are just so hocked up on, I mean, like how he said, like, what are you doing to that man, like? I mean, instead come of what on. are you doing to that man? Like, let me let me show you how it feels. What you exactly what you're doing to this person? And and if like, if I die or not, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And, and especially at this point, that's what I'm saying. And yeah, exactly, exactly. And and I just think, like I said, that man deserved way more mm -hmm. than that. Yeah. And you know, going into that, it's like look at Sandra Bland and other really horrible situations that happened with beautiful black souls that didn't get recognition like George Floyd. Mm -hmm. They think Sandra Bland was murdered in her mugshot. T.I. still pushes for that. Every single... his T.I.'s bio on Instagram still is justice for Sandra Bland. Okay, we're going to get to that because I think I remember what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'm, I'm going to break this apart by... That's, oh, this is why good. I love podcasting. Yeah, exactly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break up. this down Straight section up. by section. Okay. Yeah, you break, sorry, I didn't know how to no, answer that. No, 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 you break it like, yeah, no. See where he goes. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. Exactly. You, know, like, you answer yeah. any way you want to. Know, oh, yeah. Know, so, because very to, interesting points. Be... So, the George Floyd thing. So, because I had the same thought where it was like, okay, yeah, there's four police officers, and I. I if you, so I forget the 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 girl's name, the seventeen year old girl that whose her footage is the one that went viral. Mm -hmm. um, but there was, I think, seven people with her, and then just various people across uh, that uh, that city block. It only so takes one cameraman, that's it. Right. For real. So, um, okay, well, that's interesting as well because the way I see George, the George Floyd incident, kind of sparking the massive outcry in this country, like specifically this country, is like, yeah, George Floyd is one guy. Right, he can yeah. only die once, mm -hmm. but you have that video go viral. It's on your Instagram, Facebook. I mean, I'm sure it's on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I was on TikTok for a very short amount of time. It's like this is a cancer and deleted it. <laughs> and uh, it's on the news. Every, it was on the news every night. Yeah. Um, especially for like the next five or six months after that incident happening. Mm -hmm. So you see that so many times. I mean, George Floyd might as well have gotten killed ten million times. The, the amount of times people view that, the amount of times that it's aired. Right. So yeah, that just sparks the anger, right? Mm -hmm. There's a very clear, I think, uh, breadcrumb t uh, trail, right? But I thought, I thought, I kind of thought the same thing as you, as you just said. I was like, well, they, I mean, the, the numbers are on their side, 
And I think the reason why nobody did anything was, first of all, the shock, right? You're watching something happen, and your brain is trying to register what's going on. That's a very shocking thing. Is I guess, and, and I, I guess I'm more suicidal than most people. <laughs> like, I really would do something yeah. like that. I, I, if someone is getting killed by a cop, I'm getting killed by the next cop trying to kill a cop. Like, I think it's interesting. It's interesting you saying, like, we are a very desensitized uh, nation. We are, right? Well, the world is desensitized. Um and which is super weird um, for a lot of reasons, but with how desensitized we are, I think first of all the initial shock of what's happening. Like, am I actually watching yeah. this right? And then you look at the neighborhood that they're in, and the, and the crime rates that they have. A and B, the amount of um, uh, like what's the proper term to call? It? I guess like uh, uh, cop on minority cases, right? Justified or otherwise. Um, cases that happen in that specific neighborhood in that city, right? They're on that the bad side of that coin. So, regardless if they're used to seeing it or not, I feel like they they look at that and they're like, well, if I do something, maybe I will end up like him, right? No one knew who he was right. at that point, right? So maybe I will end up like him. I think it might be better to just make sure people see this is happening and see if the world takes over, right. which which it definitely did, right? You can't argue that it didn't. There were protests around the world about an American, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I, I just think it's a very interesting way that that just got blown up. Mm-hmm. And then I think that um, like the Black Lives Matter movement, right? So let's move on from the actual murder to the riots that happened, yeah. right? Every single riot, at least that I saw, every single riot, started out as a protest a real legitimate peaceful protest Mm -hmm. now granted are there outliers i'm sure but at least the ones that i saw they all started out as protests and i think that the reason why they turned into riots i think there's just two main reasons right you have people that are actually there they're in the minority of people who just want to cause destruction they really don't care that much about change or they care about change in a very radical way and they're willing to take it to a certain extreme Mm -hmm. i think you're right and i think people when in a large group whether it's like even at a concert like if you've been to an albuquerque concert oh yeah at the amphitheater yeah when one thing starts going away people find an excuse in that to be like Let's do more. Stu- yeah. Let's do more stupid shit. This yeah. is our Burning Man, or this is Woodstock. Well, people Whatever. set actual fires in the lawn. Yeah, exactly. like I remember going. I go to like uh, heavy metal concerts yeah. back when that was still a thing. Hopefully they'll come back. Right. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I mostly go to heavy metal concerts. So I remember being in the in the lawn for Slipknot. And people just setting fires. I'm like, you know, this is grass, right? Yeah. Like like dry grass because this is New Mexico. We're in a desert. And like, you, <laughs> you, you want to die? All right, whatever, man. Yeah. Um. So I think that's the first thing, right? Is that there was there's a small group of people who just want who do for one reason or another they want to cause the violence they want to cause destruction within that protest the other reason they turn into riots and this is like sadly this is documented information that we have that our government what they do is they send in government agents dressed as civilians and they start violence within a peaceful That's protest. All it takes. It take, right. All it takes is one person throwing the bricks that were already laid out there. Right. They, weren't there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They start they start they the violence. Dropping off bricks mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. like there's no construction here. Yeah. You guys are causing yeah. construction just by putting the exactly. and sending your guys mm-hmm. civil agents in. So so the government uh so really government supplied individuals, they go in there, they start the violence, violence kicks off and now law enforcement is able to come in and break up the protest they didn't want in the first place. And what really sucks is you kind of start uh, uh, connecting the dots and it's like, well, you know, maybe it is a a right leaning government doing that, but the left leaning government has done it throughout the decades as well. Like Mm -hmm. I think people, they're starting to wise up to it, but I think people are finally to realizing that no matter what left, right, they don't care about you. Mm -hmm. Like they don't, they don't care about you. And I think the most obvious, um, or if you go left and right, everyone's going to meet, in the middle, right? Eventually. Like, yeah, that's what they're doing. They, they, exactly. They meet each other halfway and they go, all right, that sounds like we could fuck with that. Mm-hmm. Well, that's oh, why yeah. this is so important and right here. We'll do us on exactly. the side and we'll pretend like we hate each other and then cause more division. And yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's just, it's weird. It's subliminal and I hate it. And I don't like it. Yeah, no, it, it, re- it really sucks. And um, so then, you know, because I, I kind of view, because like I agree with Black Lives Matter. Like, 
I think that's a very separate conversation if you don't agree with that statement, mm -hmm. right? If you don't agree with the statement Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. that's a whole different like conversation that needs yeah, to be had, straight up. you know, with a trained professional because mm -hmm. I am not that guy. Right. But what I don't agree with is what a lot of the more, again, the radical minority within that group has turned that into. Yeah. It's turned into a caricature. I have a good example of that, right? So when, this, when, when all this was going on, I was working at a place and I'm not going to say where, um, but I was working with a person and I'm not going to say who, but they were really hyped up on Black Lives Matter, right? And then I got my friend, I'm not going to say who, I got him a job, but he's African American, and she did everything she could to try to get him fired, so it was like counteractive to what, yeah. like, everything she was trying to portray. Well, it's virtue signaling at its, like, most bare basic definition. Right. Yeah, it's, right. it's, it's yeah. stupid. Yeah, and I was just like, I was like, really? I was mm -hmm. like, in the back of my head, I was just like, you just totally just told me that you were all about Black Lives Matter. Yeah. And then when I got my friend a job here, you totally pretending like it didn't you know what i'm saying and it's like it's like it's, it's messed up well at a, at, and then at a much larger scale you look at the administration that just came in now i remember uh maybe it was mid february no it had to be like the end of february beginning of march um the actual like twitter handle for black lives matter mm -hmm. they tweeted out it's been like 45 days and the biden administration still doesn't want to speak to speak with us and i just read that and i'm like well yeah because they don't care about you anymore they won Mm -hmm. They they used you. Mm -hmm. They yeah. used what should be a very righteous and correct movement mm -hmm. to their political advantage. Mm -hmm. You di you didn't see this coming. Totally agree with that. Like, like you know what I mean. And and then people get surprised. Like, well, Kamala Harris would never do that. She would never, you know, turn on black people. It's like, do you want to look at her or her records as the uh, I think it's the DA, right? Yeah. The, 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 the tracker, the district attorney. Away, she's put away more. Yeah, in California. Do you yeah. want to see what she did to that uh, criminal justice system? Yeah. Are you sure? And I hate to say minorities. I think we're all majorities. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I think the minority is the 1%. Yeah. You know well, I'm well we're Americans. Yeah. That's the point. Right. The whole point is that no matter who you are, no matter where you came from, you're supposed to come here and be able to be, the, if you put in the work, you're yeah. supposed to be able to become the best version of yourself. Yep. Right? The American right? dream, right? That's what, the, exactly, the American dream. But now, again, people are kind of wising up to the act that, yes, are there people that pull themselves up from their bootstraps and do their thing? Yes, there is. That still happens. But you're starting to see that, like, there is a business in keeping certain parts of this country poor. Mm -hmm. There is a business in making sure that not all of the homeless problem gets fixed. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually a really good episode of uh, of Rogan that he did. He had the mayor of Austin on, and they were talking about what they're trying to do to fix the Austin uh, Austin Texas homeless problem, and how like their budget's only like a 1.2 million a year or so. But then wow. Los Angeles, their homeless problem is out the wazoo, oh, and yeah. their budget is 250 million dollars a year. Damn. 250 million dollars a year. Skid, have you seen Skid yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. Yeah, it's oh, like, yeah. It's like all of Central full of tents. You know I've, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Honestly, like, mm -hmm. it's, it's intense, and I, uh, that's unbelievable that there's 250 There's 250 million dollars a year. That's unbelievable. And the problem is still is crazy. the way it is. And one of their big solutions that they actually tried to, like, champ, uh, champion behind, but then people just attacked them on the internet, and they just kind of backed off, was... I want to say like in July or August of last year, they, instead of like making bigger moves to like start like um, putting these homeless people in homes or in some sort of structure that isn't a tent, mm -hmm. they put porta shitters in the ghettos, yeah, like that, in the tent cities. They just the, put porta shitters. The cheapest thing to do. Like, and then, it, and then we put $250 million worth of shitters. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. We're all good. Yeah. I, I promise, oh, yeah. I promise, government. We did, we did what we did. Yeah, so, okay, so, well, back to what we were talking about. So then you look at the uh, J uh, January 6th, yeah. right? The January 6th insurrection. So I see that, I view that through the same lens as I do the the BLM riots. And the reason why I say that is because, <clears throat> with again, the height division in this country is out of, it's just ridiculous. And it's so easy to look at a group of people and be like, oh, those crazy Black Lives Matter people, those crazy liberals, the crazy leftists, whatever you want to call them. And in the same way, it's very easy to look at the insurrection, like, oh, those those crazy right-wing Trumpers, those idiots, those morons. Now, granted, what happened 
on January 6th is not okay. It is not okay. And that can't happen. And I think, like, personally, I voted for Trump in the 2016 election because I thought, you know what, at least maybe he'll be different than what we've had for the past eight years, Mm -hmm. right? Maybe someone outside of the system will actually do things. Mm -hmm. And for better or worse, at least we had a good economy. Like, you know, and and what I thought, it's not a side note, I thought it was wild watching the North and South Korean leaders shake hands Mm -hmm. because Trump forced them to. I thought that was wild. Through whatever negotiation process he went through, mm-hmm. watching the North and South Korean leaders shake hands was, I don't think we'll ever see that again. Isn't that to own Americans? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, just, I just thought it was ridiculous. Like, like, yeah. When they finally become rich in America, they're just like, oh, this is the deal, remember? Like, they said we could have all you guys for computer monkeys. Um, but what was, but for real. going back to the insurrection, um, what that shows, though, is how dangerous somebody like trump can really be Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. like if trump really because i don't think he's just this alt-right evil lex luther character that wants to kill everybody i don't think he's that but i don't think he's actually competent enough to be a president again yeah he's not the guy but what that shows is what happens when a charismatic dude with a lot of money gets into a position of power what can end up happening and it's funny because if you look at political analysts when they're um, – because I did a lot of uh, like personal election coverage when that was going down in November. And I was like, I was really curious, like, how is this going to pan out? Right. Like, either way, we're kind of fucked, but, like, how is this going to go down? Like, there's mm-hmm. like there's no way Trump wins after COVID. But then – like because I was ready to vote super left, mm-hmm. right? I was like – because I saw their lineup. I was like, Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang, mm-hmm. Pete Buttigieg. Um, and that's them meeting at the middle, right? Yeah, and all, saying, hey, like the lesser of two weeks. Like all these great yeah, people that they had, super diverse lineup. Um, uh, I think his name is Adrian uh, Castro. All these guys, I was like, and girls, I was like, this is this is it. We have the answer. We have a couple answers. What some are better than others, but they're not. They're not Trump. They're right. not Biden. Right. And I was like, this this could be it. And they pick Biden. And I was like, okay, so let's just assume that you have to pick the old white guy. You didn't even pick the good one. Yeah. <laughs> you could pick Bernie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not all for democratic socialism. I'm not really for that necessarily, but at least Bernie, like, you look, can look at that guy and say that he cares. Well, I was even going to say Bernie Sanders, Jeb Bush, and Elizabeth Warren. Those are two, the three people that I could definitely put in office right now that would do in both three, all three categories that would do an abundant job better than what old Joe's doing. Yeah. And that's coming from a neutral point of view. No, for sure. That and really I, is coming from a neutral point of view. Yeah, because I just, I, I see, I, like I said, I see, um, I see Sanders and I'm like, at least this dude's consistent. He's been consistent. And people try to shit on him because he has a lot of money. It's like, well... If you're in the political game for over 40 years, you're going to learn how to make money, yeah. A, and B, yeah. yeah, and if and if you're going to go into a second election cycle, you've got to kind of assume you're going to get screwed over again, so why not try to make money on the back end? It's <laughs> yeah. right. so like, if I lose, at least I made a couple million. And like, he, that's a pretty good way to set yourself up. And he goes viral without even trying. Dude. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So you So then you look at that insurrection that happened. And there was three rallies that went down that day. It was a Trump rally, whichever one of his sons, I forget the one that held one, and then that fucking goblin. Giuliani. Um, Giuliani. Oh, my God. He, that dude is like, he's running the bank in Hogwarts, bro. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> not for out too, right? God. Have you seen Borat 2? <laughs> yes, oh, yeah, I have. Dog. What, yeah. What the, bro. Yeah, that's fucked he is probably, and there's ties with Giuliani, uh, Alan Dershowitz, and Trump with Epstein. And that whole Borat thing solidified it. Yeah. Solidified it. See, I was I watched Borat 2, and I made it up to the scene where they're... <laughs> Oh, they made it to the scene where they're dancing and she has her period. Oh, yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, my God, this is your God. Because I love the first Borat. Yeah. And that's one of the funniest movies ever made. But then after that, the movie started kind of like trickling off. And I was like, ah, this isn't that great. But I heard about the Giuliani thing. Mm-hmm. So I kind of like skipped through it and made yeah. it to that, to that scene. And uh, 
Yeah, they got him. They they they, they kind of got him. Oh yeah, it's mm-hmm. disgusting shit, dog. Like it, that shit really makes me question. Like that's what I'm saying. I can't uh, I can't support any right left any of that shit because because they're just as shitty as the other. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. They're meeting in the middle, and where are they meeting in Epstein Island? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? straight, yeah. Up. straight the fuck. So up. they so they have those three rallies, and they're basically saying the election was stolen. We need to go stop the vote. Trump really won. And then when you know when Trump is saying stuff like, uh, what what was he saying? He was like they uh. They took the election from you. You have the power to go stop the vote. And if spineless, uh, if spineless Pence doesn't do anything, we need to get him to. Like, yeah. do you know how government works? What is Pence gonna do about a vote? Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't do anything anyway. Yeah. So, Straight so up. when you have all this, just honestly, when you have all this insanity going down, and um, you know, again, when you have a, a figurehead like trump and his cohorts and they have the ability to really fire people up like that yeah. you know um because i think obama was a really good speaker and he's a great like presidential guy you know but i think trump kind of like is almost up there with the way that he's able to get to a certain amount of people oh, yeah. right he's able to really be charismatic like it was cute when he was running the for president and he's he's the guy from the what's his, what was his show called the apprentice, the apprentice yeah. he's the guy from the apprentice and he's going up against all these like straight you know stand up straight nice press suit oh, yeah. i went to college you know uh b- politicians that are staying like they talk about their talking points they stay in line they only do this and then trump's over here right. calling them fat calling them pigs yeah. calling them uh, crooked Hillary and crazy Bernie and it's just it was it's cute because nobody thought that was actually gonna work right. and then it worked and it's like oh well maybe it'll change and it didn't change mm-hmm. so then you have all of this momentum coming up and then you've got COVID right and again yeah. like everyone's locked in their house nobody's got money and people just want they want something to do and I guess I guess I mean I should be laughing but apparently there were some people in that insurrection that had heart attacks. Because that was the most exciting day of their life, was storming the Capitol. Holy shit. Yeah, people had fucking heart attacks doing it. They were cooped up all year, went out once, and fucking had a heart attack. <laughs> Damn. That just goes to show how many people that love politics love fucking drama. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, yeah. Like, they're like, they're like, shout out to all the Karens and all the whatever. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. If, is that illegal to say Karen? No, <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, like, it's just, it's ridiculous to me, like, how it's just like, everyone's striving on division and fighting and mm-hmm. this well because that's what that's like that's the clickbaity that's thing yeah oh, yeah that's how you sell stuff oh, like yeah. house of cards is not supposed to be a documentary right. man oh, yeah like oh my god so anyway they get through and I, and I just remember i was at work and i remember seeing like the footage like people are storming the the cap what are you sure mm-hmm. and then so i remember watching that and just thinking well this can go one of two ways they can either let them do their thing and tire themselves out and maybe a few people die, fine. Or, like, the, the National Guard, the, like, some actual armed individuals get called in and we have a problem on our hands. It looks like Terminator 2. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm very glad that they just let them tire themselves out. I think that's a better alternative to just people getting shot down in the streets. Mm. But, you know, the way Trump handled it, I mean, it rubbed me the wrong way, the same way that he handled the Charleston incident, where he tells these people at the insurrection, we love you, we have to stop, we can't do this. Yeah. In the same way, the Charleston incident, five years, four years prior, where he's like, well, there was bad people on both sides. No, yeah. there's good people on both like, sides. Like, no, even, dude. Even the Puerto Rico thing, when they got hit with that hurricane. He's he, throwing. He, no, well, he was calling him Puerto Rico, like P-W-E-T-O. Rico. Yeah. Like they're oh, wet, you know what I mean? Yeah. And throwing oh, damn. Fucking, and throwing a fucking uh, <sighs> what was it? Uh, paper towels. And yeah. Shit. Like if he was shocked, like just flinging him off his wrist and shit. Like that shit's it's it's for the birds, and he's just subliminally doing that shit to piss everybody off and excite everybody at the same time. Well, because he's a uh, uh, yeah, he's 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 a he's an entertainer. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what he is. He plays mm-hmm. the bad guy. Mm-hmm. He's in, our president. Has, is in the WWE Hall of Fame. Okay? Like, that's a statement that yeah. is true. With ICP. <laughs> yeah. Straight up. 
Well, if you guys, if you think about it, what both of you guys said, the main reason, and you said you voted for Trump for the first time, the main reason, one of my, if if you ask me with what my conservative homies really said during like 2016, is they voted for Trump because he was not a politician. I heard that from like a majority yeah. of my conservative homies. And I probably even like family members that I know that support Trump, they said, I don't like Biden, I would rather just do this for, uh, or Hillary, my bad, because it was 2016. I would rather, um, yeah. And uh, the the main reason why the insurrection kind of like rolled, rolled out that way was because he's not a politician. Same thing how you said. If I would, then let's just be hypothetical. Let's say I did the Southwest 16 and got robbed from it. Like legitimately, like something happened from oh, yeah. it. And, and I went on social media and said, you know what, we're going to do this, this. I would get a reaction, a little bit of a reaction. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I wouldn't get people storming Arrow Studios, you know, but like it's it's something that uh, an entertainer does. Do you get what I'm saying? It's something that um, like somebody really... And that's why he probably is in the W... What is it, WWF or yeah. WCW? W WWE. Or yeah. WWE, that's yeah. why, because he's up there with Vince McMahon and, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, putting on that show, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's, it's really like that. But yeah, and, and so th that's it in a nutshell, too, is because if he would have had... And that's why they got old Sleepy Joe in, is because he <laughs> they said... he's But th that's, they literally say they got him in there because he was the most qualified. Because he's been in politics for so fucking long. And it's like, dog, he can't even construct a full sentence without it sounding like some fucking convalescent home shit. And like, I, and I mean that with the most love in my heart because I really did like the Obama administration. But he has gone way down in cognitive ability. And the, I tell that to anybody when they talk about Trump versus Biden is that... Trump could swindle Biden out of his shoes and boxers and everything. It's it's a different mental capacity. It right? is. It really it is. is. And the best way I've heard it put is that we will, if we're not there already, because we, what we see is what they allow us to see. Right. Lord fucking knows right. what they hook him up to and like what vitamins they give him. Or if he's a clone or yeah, 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 seriously, yeah. what's going yeah, on? Yeah. Like, yeah, what is going on behind the scenes? For real. But of some sort. no, so he definitely has a handler. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. But like, um, if we're not there already, we will very soon get probably by the end of the year, get to the point where his mental health is a national security concern. Mm -hmm. Because what if he, because he's supposed to meet with Putin here pretty soon. He, he might be the lab that they're constructing the new virus in. <laughs> and then they hit him like a, with a pinata stick. And it's, <laughs> all oh my God, that's a bad Bars. South Park episode. I know, yeah. Just you just like, think he's doing I'm an really actual, yeah. You think, you think no. he's just doing a regular Joe Biden thing? And it's like, no, he's stumbling more than usual. <laughs> His <laughs> face is drooping to the left. This isn't a regular Joe Biden. Yeah. Like what happened to this recall? fucking guy? Uh, yeah. But what I'm what I'm scared of is that either yeah he his mental health his mental health state becomes a national security concern and he lets something loose talking to world leaders because like one thing I did like from Trump and he got a lot of criticism from it that I didn't really understand but he met with our enemies he tried to have conversations with our enemies mm -hmm. and sooner or later it's gonna come the day where Biden's gonna have to do the same thing he's going to have to do the same exact yeah. thing mm -hmm. and. If he says the wrong thing to the wrong person, not even letting secrets out, right? But he just tries to make a stupid joke from the 1920s, and he says it to the wrong exactly. person, he pisses somebody off. He rubs the wrong leader's exactly. cheek or whatever. Oh, my God. Okay, so there was a speech he was giving. Oh my God. Sorry, I had to go no. there. He was, there was a speech he was giving, and there's this 13-year-old there's this girl. No, 12-year-old girl sitting in the front, like, of the front or second row and he's standing there and he's going uh, hey look at her sitting there with her legs crossed like she's a 19 year old like what 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 do you mean by that Fucking weirdo, like dog. just over the age of 18 or are you, are you hitting on a 12 year old like what are you doing man and then there's another speech where he he approaches the podium and he's gonna talk to all the press and he goes, yeah, well, I got my note cards to go off what they give me like usual. And at, at least try to hide that you're a yeah, puppet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Doug. If Trump, if Trump would fucking, yeah, that's some crazy shit, bro. When it came to Trump and the, uh, the press, it was a total different story. 
Yeah, it was it was story. it was Trump. It almost became like Trump was interviewing yeah. the press. Yeah, yeah. I I, mi- I do miss having a president that at least stand up for himself. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if, I wish Biden was twenty years younger and had some oh, yeah. cognitive ability. Oh yeah, exactly. No, you really couldn't say you could only if that was the case. You could just say that he's a dickhead president. Point blank. But now he's just a dickhead president that's too old, you know? Yeah, I don't, I don't know where. And now that, like, so we're supposed to be opening up as a state in the beginning July, of July, fourth right? Of, fourth of July, I heard. Okay. Yep. So now that we open up uh, completely as a state, what does that mean for you guys? Like, does that really start shows. opening up? Right? So, like, for uh, shows, shows and stuff, are you guys prepping for that? Oh, or? Yeah, yeah, I just did my first show on Friday, yeah. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Okay. Shit was dope. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. So, very, very do you cool. do you guys know? Because like I know a lot of local music uh, plays a lot at the Launchpad, uh, Chemo Theater, and uh, Sister as well. So like, does are those places like that? Are they opening a hundred percent to your knowledge? I think so, and I think Jam Spot and then Studio B is going to be open for live performances and concerts and mm-hmm. everything is. I, I love it because now that everything's opening in Old Town. Like, we're, we're like the pond of Old Town, so, like, people just spill in there, and mm-hmm. just, they're just so curious about what we're doing, and we're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff, so make sure you guys go check us out, 323 Romero Street. Yeah, I am I would love to see Studio B. I mean, yeah. it's just the pictures and what you guys are able to put out from there is just amazing. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, now this shit's finally opening back up. I miss going to shows. Hell yeah. I mean, I mean whether it's big stuff at Isleta, like, I know Slipknot's coming back. I know that... Um, I think a day to remember will be coming through next year. So uh, mm-hmm. Run the Jewels and Raise the Machine is coming to Las Cruces, bro. What? Damn. And, I know you're going to be there, oh, dog. No. You're going to be there. The machine and Run the Jewels, that's going to be a dope ass Yeah, I am beyond myself excited for Las stuff like Cruces. that. Yeah, I'm down oh, in Cruces. I'm going to be smoking some ooh la la for that. <laughs> Fuck uh, yeah. You are telling me that shit's good, huh? Bro, it's fucking amazing. That ooh la la, they got it from Cookies. It's, oh, it's yeah. the Run the Jewels official like weed little eighth. You oh, know? nice, nice. It's fucking fire, dog. Is it good? Yeah, it's probably in my top ten from Cookies Colorado. Damn. Nice. nice. So as much as as much as I'm excited to see all that big stuff, like I'm really am excited to check out local music, um, smaller bands, smaller artists that are passing through. You know, I'm super excited for that. So definitely keep me updated. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to have you guys through like on a rate every couple of months. Just keep up with sure you guys, see what you're Let's doing. Do Same thing with the rest of the uh, local artists. You know, yeah. I just I love being able to promote and put out as much local stuff as I can. That's I think it's awesome. super Hell fucking yeah. important. And hey, we all have to, man. Like honestly. We just need to be a big hub and we all need to be together and be like New Mexico versus everybody instead of like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't, I'm over the division and all that. So I think it's it's about time that once we open up, everything's going to be okay. And I think that like, I think that's the best way to like get yourself out there. Yeah. Like I was having a conversation with, uh, with my aunt and she's worked in retail and retail management. And I can't say like what company she's been the vice president for, but mm. big big like clothing brands that she's ran and she's ran like for all of like north america and europe and like uh, or like the entire north america down to like mexico and uh, latin america like she's managed all that and i was trying to get some advice from her i was like so outside of like obviously you have to market and put out like um ads like that like as far as stuff that i can handle on a day-to-day what's the best way to really put yourself out there she's like don't overextend like hone what you have get good in your local market Mm -hmm. and once you have the trust and the loyalty and the backing of your community that helps you launch and springboard up and i think that's something that you guys are both doing really fucking well Well, really fucking well i think you guys are fucking killing it it's awesome oh yeah so i'm super looking forward to talking to you guys again seeing you guys live shows Super looking forward to meeting like the rest of your cohorts because I mean it's just awesome. Yeah, for sure. I'll have to bring Tio down here one of these days. Fuck yeah, man! I'm really excited. Well, thank you guys both for coming. Yeah. My thank dog. you for watching. Sure. Appreciate you. Shout, shout out, yeah. Cabo. That's my brother. That's my partner in crime for sure. Straight up. Yeah, yeah. I, I really appreciate it, guys. I do. And uh, thank you guys for listening and watching. And uh, we'll check you guys out next time. Peace. Only king. Now.